Everyone gets sick, right? No one is immune to infection from microscopic invaders, right? The last year or so taught us that. Even the strongest beings on this planet are not immune from infection. There is always some smaller organism that has adapted to take advantage of the bigger one. What about the microscopic world? Are there even more microscopic vectors of disease that harm the itty bitty creepy crawlies that live among us? Today, we will meet a sinister little fungus that has adapted to take control of one of the strongest survivors on our planet, the water bear. Tardigrades, or water bears, are one of the toughest little beasties on the planet. They are known far and wide as capable of survival in just about any environmental condition thrown at them, whether that be extreme temperatures, pressures, air deprivation, radiation dehydration, or starvation. These adaptations have even allowed these critters the ability to survive for a time in the vacuum of space. Of course, survive doesn't equal thrive. Though these huggable cushion slugs can technically survive a trip outside a spaceship, they can't live there forever and will eventually die. How they do all this is a topic for another time. As tough as these suckers are, there is something that can infiltrate their hard exterior to get to their translucent internal goodness. Basically, every life form on the planet has some other life form that can parasitize it. When it comes to invertebrates like insects, arachnids, and tardigrades, the most common parasite is the humble plantimal, the fungus. I've gone over the bizarre white fuzzy moldy fungus that kills cellar spiders before, but there are thousands of different types of parasitic fungus that do all sorts of things to their hosts. Obviously, there are the branching ones that zombify ants. But there's also a particular one that has found a way to breach the leathery cuticle of the water bear. The story of the water bear zombies begins on February 14th, 1950, when a leaf mold was collected along a roadside bordering a deciduous forest near Oxford, Pennsylvania. The sample made its way to American mycologist Charles Dreschler who placed bits of the sample on agar cultures residing in some petri dishes. After a month of letting the crusty bits grow and multiply, he threw those suckers under a microscope and discovered something quite unusual. He found tardigrades being mercilessly slaughtered by a sinister foe, a millennia-old foe of the creepy crawly arthropod, the fungus among us. The fungus doesn't look too different from other kinds of invertebrate zombifying fungi, but it's at a microscopic or near microscopic scale. He called it Balocephala sphaerospora, with Balocephala meaning to throw hands. Wait, that, that's not right. Uh, to throw head. Ah, yes, because of what it does. Sphaerospora meaning spherical spore. Spore is just a word for seed, sperm, or you know, the stuff for reproduction. Dressler's fungus is a member of the order Entomophthorales, which translates to insect destroyer because it likes to really mess up some exoskeleton enjoyers. First step to zombifying a tardigrade begins with a spore. To start off, that spore has to be lucky enough to land on a water bear. Once it does, it unusually doesn't spurt out any sticky substances to adhere itself to the outside of the indestructible water bag. According to Dressler, they tend to be most concentrated near the head end of the animalcule, probably because that would be the end that pushes through all the debris in its environment. Clearly, the spores are capable of sticking to the water bear's thick, leathery cuticle, enough to begin the infection process. But what comes next is truly atrocious behavior. Second step to zombifying a tardigrade begins once that spore gets all nice and snug in the water bear's nooks, crannies, wrinkles, and rolls. Once that happens, it stays there for a good chunk of time. Once that unspecified chunk of time passes, it grows a germ tube, which is a long outgrowth of the fungus, somewhat like a root. The fungus violently penetrates the shaft of its germ tube into the cuticle of the previously impenetrable tardigrade. 
This tube isn't going in blind and weeds its way into the underlying fleshy tissues of our poor eight-legged friend. As this tube is doing the dirty work, a vacuole engorges at the head of the spore, still on the outside of the water bear. A vacuole is an organelle found in cells that functions as a water storage container that can also slosh around some enzymes. Third step to zombifying a tardigrade involves the spore's germ tube inflating inside the tardigrade to produce an infection bladder. Since the cuticle is thinner on the legs and sides of the water bear, the germ tube of the spores that attached to these sites continue to grow beyond the good parts of the water bear. The bladder that forms at the end of the tube is the receptacle for the contents of the spore, which was still just hanging on for dear life on the outside of the water bear. It's like a heist movie, the spore needs to get in and out. It's really ingenuitive actually. They stick, burrow, and infiltrate. What's next? Fourth step to zombifying a tardigrade finds our little fungus growing and spreading its tendrils all over the body of the water bear. The fungus continues to spread as it feeds on the nutrients within the soft, pillowy body of the tardigrade, all while taking up room inside, squishing, crushing, cracking all the important bits of the animalcule's organs, which will eventually kill our cute little host. At some point, the infection bladder develops into a thallus or assimilative hypha, which is just nerd speak for the root or hyphae of a fungus, which has yet to differentiate into different parts. This thallus then becomes abjointed due to being bashed around from inside and outside the host. Abjointed means the thallus breaks off from the now empty spore clinging onto the outside and floats around the body of the water bear willy-nilly. This process continues until the tardigrade's organs completely fail and the poor bastard dies. Once the host has perished, asexual reproduction of the fungus can begin. Fifth step to zombifying a tardigrade starts off with those floating bits of thalli becoming lodged inside the body due to an increase in size. This results in a log jam like configuration of the thalli. It's just a jumbled mess of sausages. This is actually pretty unusual for most fungi, as they usually organize themselves pretty orderly within their host. Next is the asexual reproduction I spoke of earlier. With the host dead and its nutrients quickly running out, the fungi need to have sex. They do this by sprouting some tasty fruiting bodies from their hyphae. These sprouts grow outward till they reach the host's cuticle and penetrate it for the last time. This central stalk sprouts smaller branches that begin producing new spores. This spore walls itself off once it has grown enough, becoming what is called conidia. These little conidia can begin the infectious cycle anew if any nearby tardigrades are caught unaware. They fall off the host and float to a new one, or the new host accidentally finds the host's carcass and picks up the nasty little hitchhiker. These entomophthorales keep another trick up their sleeve to get into the sleeves of more hosts. The conidia spores have the ability to shoot off into the air via a rupture at their base. This spurting ability lets the spores spread further to find hosts nearby that are too smart to come near the previous host's corpse. Thus, we've found yet another organism that practices eternal recurrence, and I really just don't like that. The point is, the host is alive as the fungus digests it. <sighs> Make sure you leave a like and comment on this video. Share it around and subscribe. While you're at it, ring the notification bell too if you want to stay in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching. Want to help Edge out? Subscribe to the Patreon at any tier you like for a whole smorgasbord of delicious offerings. Many thanks to Thea Svensson, Steve Bradshaw, Staniforth Hopkins, Natty Cat, Dinosaur, Arda Bayer, Abby Smith, Henry Brennan, Dana Manchester, Chris Frampton, and Antron. You've all helped to make this channel possible. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Give me one, give me